There are various reasons why people may need a custom shape of the PCB. Some are making fun projects which require fun shapes. In some cases, projects require a particular shape, e.g. to fit the casing. Me, I just needed to save some money. If you want to find out what I'm talking about, please stick around. Hi, it's been a while since I posted my last video, but there is a good reason for this. The SSD drive in my laptop crashed and all the data, including my channel work in progress, went up in flames. It took me a while to regroup. If somebody tells you that real men do not make backups, let me tell you, that is rubbish. So if you didn't backup your crucial data, please stop watching this video and do it now. I'll wait. Done? Oh, fantastic. Great, we can continue. In this video I'm going to be talking about fritzing, which is a tool to create your custom PCBs. So if you don't know that tool, maybe it's a good idea to watch my fritzing tutorial first. You will find the links to that tutorial below. For the project I'm currently working on, I want to place all my electronic parts on a PCB which is 8 by 7.5 cm in size. But I need this PCB in two pieces where one is elevated over the other one and mounted on top of it. I normally would need to pay for two designs, so the material cost would be the same, but there are some additional fees for performing checks of the design, packaging and probably some other ones. So the goal here is to order both PCBs as one to get rid of those extra costs. I'll order PCB with four 1mm wide cutouts positioned on the PCB board this way that it will be possible to break the smaller PCB off and mount it just the way I planned it. To be able to build a custom shape PCB that is recognized by fritzing, we need to build a vector of that shape in a very particular way. We would use Inkscape application to do it. The process can be divided in several sections. First one is to create the shape itself. We start with scaling down the page size to match the size of the custom format. In my case, I draw green rectangular and change its attributes and coordinates so it is the same size as the page and positioned right in the center. Then I create a smaller black rectangular which would represent one of the cutouts. Let's maintain its size and position and then do the same for the other three. When this is done, we need to select the first cutout together with the PCB object and go to the menu options and select Path, Difference. You would see that the black rectangle becomes negative space. We repeat the same actions for the other three. The next step would be to create the layers. Currently the shape we created is in layer 1. Let's create the second layer called board, which is a sublayer of layer 1. Then let's create another sublayer called silk screen. When this is done, we select our shape in layer 1, copy it to the clipboard and delete it, and then we paste it to both sublayers. As you can see, we end up with two independent shapes in bold and silk screen layers. The next step is to adjust fill and stroke settings of the objects in two sublayers. We start with silk screen. We select no paint option in fill tab. Then we select 
flat color options in the stroke patch tab, providing values 255 for red, green and blue color fields. And finally, in stroke style tab, let's change the unit of measure to inches and set the width to 8 thousandths of the inch. Now, we choose the object in the board layer and in the field tab, we select flat color option. And also, in the stroke paint tab, we make sure that no paint is selected. When this is done, the next step would be to adjust XML file settings. Currently, the ID of the board layer is layer 2. This needs to be changed to board, so the ID matches the name. We do the same for silk screen, changing ID from layer 3 to silk screen. The last thing that needs to be done is to change the puff ID of the board layer to board outline. One word, lowercase. We are nearly done. Now all we need to do is to center both board and silk screen objects and we are ready to save our design. We select Save As and it is crucial that the plain SVG format is selected. Now we need to check if we have done everything properly. Let's open our custom PCB in Fritzing. In the inspector window we go to PCB properties and load our vector image. It works, but I guess to be absolutely sure we have to populate the PCB board with electronic parts, lay some tracks and see if we can generate files for production. Voila! Moment of anticipation. And we can see that we successfully exported etchable PDFs. The same way we can generate Gerber files, which I will be sending to the manufacturer to get the PCB produced and delivered to me. It seems like everything is working fine. If you wonder what this PCB is going to be used for, you will have to have some patience as the video covering that project is going to be released roughly in 2-3 weeks. So subscribe and hit the notification button if you don't want to miss it. Also, give this video a like if you want it to resonate with YouTube algorithm and help me grow my channel this way. As always, I will see you in my next video.